you notice two things. The color of it has changed and that's because we use the word Kia in the gizmo's name. If we go to the preferences for a second and go to node colors, you can see here that the Kia group is set to receive the tile color green. And um, what Nuke does, it, it simply looks at the node's name, in this case it's Luma Kia, and if it finds the word Kia, it'll automatically assign this color. So if you change the name, it'll actually change or potentially change the color. And you can also add um, different auto colors to it or turn off the auto color altogether if you don't want this. You can also see that the gizmo has a different shape than the group node. The group node has two pointy sides, um, which tells you that this guy actually lives in your script. It's independent from external files, while the gizmo has a flat left side. And that tells you this is not a compiled node, but a gizmo, but it's still read from disk. So that means if you take this script, this new script elsewhere, where you don't have access to that gizmo file, then you won't be able to use this node. But back to the actual gizmo making process. Let's wire that up and put that into buffer 2 to make sure the gizmo is doing the right thing. It looks like it is. So that means we can delete the group and um, now work with, with the Luma key. Luma key and node. So once we've got a gizmo, we might now say, well, that's all great, but most of the time I want to actually pre mold my result after I've keyed it and that gizmo doesn't offer that functionality yet. So we want to go back and tweak it. And that's quite easily done in Nuke. You simply go to the gizmos node tab and uh, you'll find a copy to group button, which will do exactly that. It will copy your gizmo file that you saved earlier to a group node. And um, once you've done that, you can get rid of the gizmo and in the groups panel, hit the S button in the upper right corner that will reveal the internals now and we can do that because we've just pulled the external file back into our script and now we're back where we were and um, can continue to develop this tool so to add a pre-mold function we'll just go into the internals of the node of the uh, group node which is a fully functional node graph and attach a pre-mold node and in the groups panel we'll right click go to manage user knobs and this time we won't pick anything we'll actually add a checkbox so click on the add button and choose checkbox um, the name I'm gonna call the name pre-mold the name is the bit that is important to reference this knob in expressions or through scripting so make sure that's an alphanumeric um, word without spaces or any any fancy stuff whereas the label is purely cosmetic you can you can do whatever you want in there and that's just for for showing up in the interface so that's that and um, if you want to be nice you can leave a tooltip uh, help for people that will use this gizmo so it's a little bit more intuitive pre mole to apply or not now that looks a bit funny because Nuke's trying to squeeze both knobs into one line. I could do th two things. I could tell the LUT knob to start a new line to make sure the pre-multiply knob sits above it or I'll select it in the list and uh, shove the pre-multiply knob to the bottom which probably makes more sense in a workflow way because you'll use the LUT first and then decide to pre mold it or not. Now that we've got the checkbox, it doesn't really do anything yet, so we need to hook it up to the pre-mold's disable knob. You do this by going to the pre-mold node tab and then go to the disable knob, right click and choose add expression. And in the expression we'll reference that new knob we just created by typing parent. The word parent will reference the group nodes tab because the group is the parent to all its internal nodes. You type a dot followed by the knob name and the knob name we assigned was simply pre-mult and you can see the result is one because the uh, pre-mult checkbox is on and now back in the groups panel we can now control the pre-multiplication through this little checkbox 
Now you see it's uh, actually doing the opposite of what you would expect it to do. It's assigning the pre-multiplication when we uncheck it. So let's go back to the pre mult tab and right click edit expression and let's fix that by simply putting a an exclamation mark in front of the whole expression which will invert its value so 0 becomes 1 1 becomes 0 and now we're getting what we would expect now maybe spend a second thinking about useful knob defaults before you resave your gizmo so um, I'm just gonna maybe choose something that's that might make sense as a useful default value and um, the pre mold I'm gonna leave that on and now back to the group node we'll simply oh well we've got it anyway back to the node tab we'll simply export again and override the existing gizmo now when you first create this gizmo and when you're prototyping it away from production it's perfectly fine to override the gizmo with your group because you can as you saw convert the gizmo back to a group however if people including yourself are already using this gizmo in their script you might really want to work on a on a copy of it rather than overriding the production version obviously to make sure you're not destroying other people's scripts but I'll go ahead and override this anyway just for now and we'll go back to the script command and that still remembered the value so all we have to do is hit OK and there's our new gizmo